Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Whiskey and Barrel Nights Virtual Tastings. Um, we're changing it up. We've been doing some fantastic uh, tastings with everything from uh, um, our bourbon chicken recipe to some homemade barbecues and craft barbecue sauces always intermixed with whiskeys. We did some bourbon Bloody Marys. We dissed on vodka a little bit. So uh, um, we're changing it up a little bit now, and we're going international. Um, to do that, we brought in some uh, international friends. So we've got Raj Sanderval uh, from uh, Glass Revolution, um, a very good friend of mine, somebody I've known forever. And Raj has a knack for bringing in the really cool whiskeys, uh, um, place, you know, whiskeys from everywhere, from Czechoslovakia to Australia, Tasmania, um, some very cool scotches and so forth. So, um, uh, and Raj himself is quite the man of the world. We've got Mark Kaufman from uh, Winnipeg and uh, one of the administrators on Scotch Attic and, and quite the whiskey guru himself. And of course, our regular gang, uh, Kevin Dixler and, um, and TJ, our resident mixologist. So with that, what we're going to do is we love our scotches. Um, we love our bourbons and American whiskeys, but we're going to go international here. Um, you know, places from around the world, even really wild, crazy, exotic places like Canada. And, uh, you know, so it, like we brought in an expert, Mark, who he himself is quite exotic. And um, he came up with some whiskeys. I'm like, are those gettable anymore? And he assures me, yes, you can get them in Canada and a handful. If you hunt them down, they are available in the U.S. as well. Everything today is going to be uh, attainable. And then TJ is going to mix it up with some very, very cool, interesting twists. These are all things that you normally look for when you come to a tasting event, you come to Whiskey and Barrel Night. Mario's getting out of uh, his range. Uh, we took the peat away from him, and uh, he just finished crying a little bit ago, but he'll get over it. So with that, I'm gonna start off um, uh, with Inequity, which is a very, very cool bottle. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing the um, um, the master distiller and the gentleman who runs and owns the brand. He's in South Australia, about as close to Antarctica as you can get. Uh, it's brought in by, by Raj. And this is, it's a craft whiskey, but it, it, everyone, it doesn't have that craft taste to it. it. This is a mature whiskey. South Australia is incredibly hot and very dry in the summer. So the whiskey ages. Raj, how old is this? How old do you think it is, Dave? Well, it, it tastes like it's six to eight, maybe 10 years. I mean, like I said, you don't, you just don't get that, that new whiskey. Two years. Really? Wow. And only 150 bottles uh, aged in uh, an X, uh, uh, what, well, a port, but uh, it's Australian port, so they can't call Fortified it Fortified wines. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the, the, I think they still call it uh, Tawny down there but uh, that's the name it's given that's a really pretty color raj yeah. two years old and this is a very cool so we're going to start off with about as far away from from here from well, i'm in chicago so as you can get um and this is it literally is three plane rides to get to adelaide uh australia and this is very cool so that's we're starting that off i can't even it's hard to even get your head around this. You'll figure it out. Mm. It, it's just, just smacking good whiskey. There's a, there's a lot of nuttiness and, and fruit, uh, you know, the, the typical port characteristics that you would get, uh, almost like a, a fruit cake kind of thing uh, going on there. But not overly done, not like some whiskeys that are port barrel finish that are, you know, this huge fruit bomb. Um, this is, this is really, really nice, very pleasant. So we've got an equity from South Australia. Kevin, what are you, what are you leading off with there? Something more affordable. I'm uh, going to be drinking a little bit of a whiskey from uh, South Africa. It's uh, run by the uh, company that uh, carries uh, three ships, and it's called Bain. And Bain is uh, a bottle that's, uh, as I said before, extremely affordable at $29.99. It's not going to break people's backs financially. Um, I like it. It has tremendous layers of caramel in it. 
and for the price, it's uh, it's it's quite a deal, I think. I and mean, it, it's right up there with buy with your palate, not your ego. And, uh, exactly. and 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 that was not Kevin knocking on inequity or anything else. He's just making a comment on the uh, on on the the price point on on Baines. I mean, anytime you can get a reasonably mature whiskey for thirty dollars. Um, something as, as exotic as that, but very sweet, right? I mean, we, we talked about, do we finish with that as dessert or do we lead with that as a, uh, as, as a takeoff? But we tasted it last night really heavy on the caramel, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, a gr that's a grain whiskey, isn't that, Kevin? What's that? It's a grain whiskey, right? It is a grain whiskey, absolutely, yeah. and which makes it even more interesting. Because so that's a, a blended grain? Interesting. It's a blend. Or a single, is it a single grain then? Blended. Blended, interesting. This one has uh, got the uh, caramel going for it. It's uh, it's a real interesting uh, South and mm. South from South Africa. They've done a really nice job with it. And and it, the 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 distiller also does three ships, which has mm. won countless international awards for whiskey of the year and so far. So it's a it's a very very cool um, uh, distiller. But again, here South Africa, and it's a reasonably priced and incredibly drinkable. Very, very approachable, very easy drinking. Raj, what are you uh, drinking with us as I enjoy Well, this? since we, uh, we're staying in that part of the world, we're going to go to India. And I was going to pour uh, Amrit Fusion, but staying in the grain vein, uh, Amrit single grain, uh, only 108 oh bottles of this, uh, single, single cast, single grain, um, that uh, was eight. This is seven years. I was... It's still May of 2012 and bottled December 2019, so seven and a half years. Look how dark that is. Yeah. Single. Now, just so everyone knows, single grain uh, does not mean it is a single grain. Single grain means that it's a grain whiskey made by one distillery. This might have been co column distilled, but they bought, I think, about six casks from another distillery, but Amrit aged uh, and bottled it. Wow. Um, and put it that they wanted to so uh so, this Raj, is li very limited how is that going to be different from amrit fusion which well, i'm gonna grab yeah, a bottle of and pour some of that, here that's what i was going to pour initially but fusion uh, is amrit's flagship whiskey this uh fusion is 75 percent of their unpeated single malt and 25 percent of their peated single malt uh married together uh there we go mark's got a bottle of it too um uh, this is, uh, has won multiple awards, including World Whiskey of the Year three times. Uh, the Fusion is just, I think, a spectacular whiskey. Wow, going from that inequity, which is that really light, incredibly balanced, just smooth to the Fusion, which is massive. And TJ and I talked about this. Um, yeah. it, it, Fusion just got an award for... Uh, Blood and Sand cocktail, right, Raj? So Fusion took first place in the Rob Roy, uh, first place in the Blood and Sand, and second in the uh, Rusty Mail. Incredible. So massive. I have, I have to get a bottle of this stuff, uh, Raj, because literally I did, a, I did a Blood and Sand last week for our, our videos. And um, and what was it, what was the other one that you I use? And you put Lafroy ten in it. I was doing Lafroy ten, but but the but the amber. I got I got to try that with the blood and sand and a rusty. It, it's a big yeah. mass uh, and a Rob Roy. Dave, let me add that on top of the gold medals that that received, that got a yum yum at uh, at our whiskey and barrel night. The fusion was was gifted so, a yum yum award. But now, Raj, what, what do you? What's the difference between what you have on that single grain and the fusion? So the fusion's all malted barley, right? Right. The single grain is a grain whiskey. So, I mean, I'm you know, again, like, like the bane. No, yeah. I mean, so this is going to be very similar to the grain in profile. The banes that uh, Kevin had, uh, sweet caramel notes, uh, a lot of vanilla, um, a lot of uh, fruit, a uh, little little sour cherry. Um, you know, it is bottled at fifty-seven point one, so you know it's higher alcohol, so one hundred one hundred and fourteen point two proof. But so smooth. I mean, you don't need to add any water to this. Wow. And then this is, and again, we can get this. We can pick this up. I know that well, I know fusion's available everywhere. Yeah, but the, the single grain, there was only 108 bottles for the entire country out of the one barrel. Uh, and so it was spread around sporadically. Uh, uh, I just sent, uh, the last two cases just went to D.C. Wow. And there, there, was, there is some in Massachusetts, D.C., uh, New York. Texas, I believe. So we've got Emerald Fusion, we've got the single grain, 
And then, TJ, what are you cooking up for us on the cocktail side? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I, now, now I'm obsessed with Amaroots. I've got, I've got to try it for my cocktails because all the notes that you guys are talking about, uh, it sounds like they would be perfect with the stuff that I picked out for today. So, um, Mark, you mentioned uh, tropical notes, I, th I think, and I, I'm wearing my tropical shirt here. And also because the pineapple is the universal symbol of hospitality is one reason I like that. So uh, I'm going to show you guys what I'm working with here. So I'm going with the, uh, the Crown Royale with the uh, Northern Harvest Rye, which is a 90% rye, uh, rye mash. A little bit bottled right up into there. And, I wanna, and so what I'm doing here is, uh, all right, so we're not breaking the, the mold with any whiskey and ginger, right? Well, this is pineapple ginger ale. So I've got, so I've got the Northern Rye Harvest. I've got pineapple uh, ginger ale on top of, and this is the secret ingredient here, and I'm going to mispronounce it probably, the uh, Elemacool Tiki Bitters by Bitter Mints. And so what's really nice about these bitters is that they've got a little spiciness to it that, that um, obviously by the name are meant for tiki style drinks and often rum drinks. But I like to use bitters as a float when it comes to these sort of things. You, so you can kind of see how that the bitters are sitting right on the top of the drink there. It's a little tricky to see over Zoom, but you can give that just a little stir with a bar spoon, or you can have that sitting right on the nose. I like to use bitters uh, to, have, to allow flavors to sit right on the top of the drink, and so they're right on the nose, um, especially when they're effervescent or botanical sort of drinks. So this right here has little hints of fruits and cloves and spice, and so do the bitters, and so do the, does the ginger beer. And so all these flavors together, man, they're awesome. So you took ginger beer, and then you added some pineapple ginger ale. Yes. I'm Where, sorry. I, did you make the, I'm sorry. I misspoke. It's pineapple ginger ale. So, so, it's, so it's this right here. You, you know it's oh, good. It comes oh, in yeah. There he goes. TJ with the two liters again. There you and, go. Uh, nothing but the best. You can get this at any local bodega in New York, Dave. I don't know if you can get out <laughs> there. There you go. Bodega. <laughs> What's my bodega, ginger ale? What's your bodega situation like in Chicago? I don't think he knows, Mark. We ain't got none. <laughs> we, ain't got, we ain't got none. So there you go. So I've garnished this off with uh, my little pineapple slice and, uh, and uh, some limes and a sword. A lot of people don't realize that you can use tropical flavors in it. Like this is probably, these t today might be the first time that I've ever invented uh, two whiskey drinks that have pineapple in it. Those, those flavors are, I don't usually mix them. Like if I if I have a good whiskey, if I have a good bourbon, if I have a good scotch, I don't want anything in it at all. So TJ, you know I mean? for us, for for the cocktail amateurs out there, or or people that just are not mixologists like yours truly, so we get the ginger uh, or the pineapple ginger ale. Yeah. So one third, two thirds, one ounce per a full glass. Ah. If I, we were to make this. So thank you for circling me back, Dave. So I'm going to have the recipe that I'm going to send your way that you guys can post on the website for everybody to gotcha. see. And, uh, but just the long and short of it is uh, two ounces of the rye. And so you fill this glass, fill a draft glass with ice. You pour two, uh, two ounces of rye in there, squeeze one lime slice right in there, and then top it with the ginger ale. And then once you've topped it with the ginger ale, all that's left is adding a few drops of the bitters on top of the drink. So it's a really simple drink. It's really, it's really simple and well-balanced. My next one, I promise, will be a little fancier, and I'll do a little pirouette the way Mario likes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we got the Tom Cruise uh, shaking going on. But uh -oh. we're barbecuing tomorrow. Uh, everybody's invited, anyone. Um, and I, I, I foresee a, a pineapple ginger ale uh, uh, whiskey drink. Yeah, I, I definitely see those in our future. And that's something, TJ, correct me if I'm wrong, you could batch that. You totally could. I was going to say, if you don't have like pineapple ginger ale, I happen to have that at my local bodega. What I would do, what I would do is I would actually muddle fresh pineapple into a shaker. And, and then I would, uh, I would shake that. I would shake that vigorously with the ice and bitters <clears throat> and maybe just a few, maybe like a few drops of water just to add a little liquid in there. And then I would take that and then, and then mix that with um, the gin regular ginger ale or better yet, unfiltered ginger beer. Mm. Uh, see, I knew the shaker would come in there somewhere. And the Crown Royal Harvest Rye, which has won some awards on its own right, um, it's so is good. a very, very rich, uh, very full flavored rye. I mean, it's one thing the Canadians know how to do is make rye. Um, for those that ever go up to Canada, if the borders ever open again, they call all whiskey rye. 
So when you order a Manhattan, <laughs> what rye you want in it, and they, you know, they name two bourbons and a scotch, don't get offended, don't think your bartender uh, doesn't know what they're talking about. They're just, uh, it's the culture up there. So Mario, what are you, uh, what are you leading off with? Dave, I'm starting off uh, in a neighboring country of my beloved Scotland. This is a Cotswold. Um, this one is the founder's choice. Um, it's aged in an STR cask that previously held a uh, red wine in American oak. Nice. She toasted Richard. That's yeah. correct. Yes, thank you. And you can see the color on this is pretty. You get a little bit of the uh, the red hue from the from the red wine casks. So if you were to peg the flavor on this, obviously we've got we've got a real heavy char, right, from that STR yes. barrel. Um, I think I was uh, surprised that the flavor of the red wine is it, not nearly overcoming. It's a very balanced whiskey, but it's more prominent than I would have expected from an STR cask. Um, I would have thought it, uh, the process would have stripped more of the flavor, but there's there's a good overlay of the wine over this. And um, for as young as it is, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it doesn't drink quite as hot. It's a bottle at about 60, 60.9. Wow. So really? Yeah. And it doesn't really present like that. I put a couple of drops of water in it. And um, I would say it certainly holds the character of what you might anticipate coming from a UK distillery. Um, so it's, it's going to be more in line with a classic Highland or Speyside, or is it its own flavor profile all together? Um, I think uh, probably the youth of the whiskey, it has not quite developed uh, the viscosity that I might expect from a more well-aged scotch. But my feeling is that if this thing had another six years in a barrel, it would be difficult to dif differentiate. It tastes like a double distilled whiskey. It doesn't taste like it's a triple distilled like Ireland, but um, has a Highland profile if I had to pick one. So, so light, not over, even with the STR cast, not, not over charred on the no. flavor. So, no, you know, no, no, the flavor of the, of the cask is, um, it's kind of hint and blended rather than uh, overbearing. It's a really surprisingly nice whiskey. I have a feeling that these guys have longevity. This is going to be an English distillery that we're going to be hearing about for years to come. There really is a fantastic brand. It's a fun brand. Like you said, it's, it's going to be fun watching it develop and, and evolve. And the second thing is, uh, I'll just do a shout out to them being, because in a World Gin Day, they make a great gin. Uh, keeping it moving, I'm jumping over. I'm joining you in Europe now that we've uh, come out of Australia. And um, believe it or not, in Belgium, they do make whiskey as well as phenomenal beer. And so we've got something that's a little bit new. It's Gouden Careless. Um, so this is a mature whiskey out of Belgium. This is an incredibly full, rich flavored whiskey but it, it has a little surprise and it does not they do not use any beer in distilling it's a traditional uh whiskey distillation but um you get this yeasty beer flavor on the back end of the palate and um in, in having I had the pleasure of uh being behind the table and, and sampling this out to some people now and again if you are a beer drinker this is your whiskey hands down say no more first of all it's from the right country if you're a beer drinker and second of all it, it's this huge rich full flavor with this very slight yeast hoppy type flavor on the back end you get fruits up front mm. a lot more fruit on the nose it's balanced out on the palate and it just really really drink smooth there's only one expression it's uh it's at 46 percent so again a, a uh a first class whiskey it's very new i think it's only been in the u.s about a year and um oh man it just finishes nice i mean another really really smooth drinking whiskey that's 
one thing I've got to say on a lot of the international whiskeys, they're servicing this. They know they're going to play to a very broad audience and they've got to make the whiskeys really, really drinkable. So like we were talking about last week on uh, Sweet Meets Pete, getting out of your comfort zone. You know, if you normally like your Highlands or your Space Sides or your Bourbons, go and experiment. Mr. Whistle was just about to tell us about one, if I remember correctly. <laughs> about what, I'm sorry? Um, we were just wondering what that bottle is. You're coddling just oh, yes. out of view. I'm ready at the go here with a bottle of the newest edition of Two Brewers, which is... Um, Canada's most award-winning single malt. Uh, they won Canadian Single Malt of the Year at the Canadian Whiskey Awards twice in a row already. So this one is interesting. Uh, that's their 20th release. And this is um, uh, aged for seven years in new American oak, charred American oak. And then together with a maple syrup producer that makes single forest maple syrup, um, this company wanted to age their maple syrup in, um, in whiskey barrels. Okay. So, uh, they, they put their maple syrup in two brewers barrels. And then when, when they got the barrels back, uh, from the, the maple syrup producer, then two brewers finished this seven year old, um, uh, whiskey in the X maple syrup barrels. And they did this five times. And it's, um, it's a blend, uh, a batting of seven, nine, and 10-year-olds. So it's their oldest release so far. And normally they release their whiskeys at 43, 46% or cask strength. But this one, because of the, um, the, uh, the soaking up of the sweet maple syrup in the staves, they had to lower it to 40% just because mm. it was just so sweet. And uh, it's unchill filtered and natural in color as they state on the label, which is great. And it smells like their, their whiskey is very much um, Highland style in terms of uh, its orientation. But um, you just get this really beautiful, malty, delicious nose. It doesn't really smell like maple syrup, but when you taste it, it's just delightfully sweet and rich, malty. Now that's a true whiskey. It's not a uh, maple whiskey cocktail or liqueur uh, because no, no maple syrup was actually added into the whiskey, but um, you really get this nice, beautiful, rich, sweet edge, um, some beautiful spice from that virgin American oak. So you've got, um, you got lots of cinnamon, you've got a little bit of nutmeg and just delicious spices. And the finish is supremely long and sweet, and it just carries on. And you get a little bit of um, that slightly uh, sort of sticky tackiness on your lips as you um, smack your lips, just because there is probably about, I don't know, uh, if, if, a, if a, a typical bottle of whiskey has, uh, let's say, a gram or two of sugar per liter naturally, and this probably has about five or seven. Um, so it's really interesting. So if you get to Canada, make sure you try and look for two brewers. Um, it's actually made by two brewers named Bob and Al at a place called uh, Yukon. But just amazing stuff. And I hope you guys get to try that. Mark, for those people who don't know the geography, uh, Yukon mm -hmm. is like next to Alaska. It's uh, exactly the north, yeah, northern part of Canada. Yes, yeah. right, guys. I was going to say road trip, but that's more like a plane trip. So, Kevin, you did a um, you, you did bangs from South Africa, and then on your uh, second whiskey, um, which one do you have? I have a product from uh, Japan this time. Oh, um, people may have heard about it or may not. It's from Suntory. And if Centauri uh, Beam um, came out with it, it's a uh, no age statement whiskey. It's called uh, Habiki Harmony. Hmm. And Habiki Harmony has been around for a bit. And uh, unlike some of the Japanese whiskeys, it has a little more balance, I think, than something than others. Um, as a no age statement, it's got flavors that 
um, really uh, are a little more complicated. I get more of the smokiness near the end. Um, it's uh, all around whiskey. It's uh, not um, not your typical Japanese whiskey, I would say, but there are some whiskeys that approach it. So, so how do you mean by by typical? Uh, there, uh, how do you mean? Well, it's more balanced, I think. I mean, again, whiskeys from uh, Japan can be more balanced, but some of the newer newer whiskeys that you find that I find that they're a little bit more malty or yeasty sometimes, and um, for that reason, I um, I tend to prefer this. Uh, Toki is another whiskey that's uh, also coming out too that people are now looking into. So if you've heard of Toki, that's another Japanese whiskey worth considering. And, and that's I, a I've blend, isn't Tatori, it? And I've got yes. Tatori here, which is uh, kind of a neat. So I'll I'll do a cheers <laughs> with you. So you have you have Hibiki, and Hibiki has won a lot of awards. They've got some older, some mature, some twenty-one year olds that are almost impossible to get if any, you ever have a chance to taste it. But but the uh, uh, um, the Hibiki you have there is gettable everywhere. Right? Roz was Three. just mentioning that the harmony is, oh wow, talk about breaking out the big guns. All right, we're, we're going to have the next uh, Zoom meeting at Raj's house. <laughs> that, that Hibiki 21 has won countless awards. And, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kevin's got the, the one that's easily gettable on the shelf, and Raj is sitting there showing off. And then, like I said, I'm uh, 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 doing a cheers with, with Kev on, on the Tatori. So um, another very cool uh, whiskey from, from Japan, but very nice, very light, very approachable whiskeys. And I know the Hibiki that Kev has is great. Is there anything underlying or anything different about it, or is it just an easy drinking whiskey, Kev? It's an easy drinker, and it's got the um... – this, I, what I consider to be smoky notes near the end and sort of in the, within the, in, embedded within the body of the whiskey, which I, which I enjoy. And approachable, right? The mm -hmm. price point on the Harmony is very reasonable, especially compared to some of the others. One, yeah. one that Raj just broke out, which is <laughs> unobtainable. It costs you an arm and a leg in your firstborn, but yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, Mark, what do you've got next? All right. So next, folks, I have something from the Netherlands. And this is from the Zuidam Distillery, and mm. it's a product known as Millstone. And this is a peated PX uh, uh, whiskey. So fully peated malt, and then matured in a PX, PX Pedro Jimenez sherry barrel. I think uh, Mario is probably salivating right now, am I right? <laughs> All right, so we'll get that poured. We've got multiple peated whiskeys, and Mario has none of them. So this is 46% ABV, which is pretty common for Millstone. They also do some cask strengths, but of course, um, it's, you know, commensurate with price. Um, so, you know, nice, typical golden hue. Mm. Beautiful peat. It's really very much like, um, kind of like uh, um, the Isle of Tobermory, the uh, Lechag peat in style. So not quite uh. Isla, but a little bit more uh, islands. So not overbearing on the peat. No, at all. not at all. No, this is not like um, uh, it's not Octomore. It's not. Uh, it's not even Ardbeg. It's more like Bomore or um, some of the sweeter Lateg or um, Ardmore. Uh, maybe something from yes, yeah. Uh, anyway, beautiful stuff. Awesome, awesome peaty nose. Patrick does an amazing job, and his rise are just incredible. Hmm. So Raj, you're familiar with this whiskey. Yes. And it's, uh, it's just wonderfully sweet. And you get that, that nice sort of um, tart raspberry from the PX. And it just blends in nicely with this, uh, this cool. smoky whiskey. Beautiful very, stuff. Very cool. I noticed that it's available. There's a Millstone Rye that Raj was mentioning is available at Total Wine. Um, I think because of the, the scale of, of the distillery, you really have to search batch by batch. If we do our trip up to Canada. They, you can find it in Alberta. There you yeah. go. Uh, so we'll come up to Calgary. Exactly. Come, come, to the, uh, come to the Calgary Stampede. Go, go ride some horses. Go you got come it. Come back with a carload of whiskey. <laughs> there you go. What could be better? Sounds like a plan. Yeah, Mark gave, knows that I'm a big fan of peated whiskey aged in a sherry cask. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, well, and we talked about that. 
uh, last week about actually coming back to yep. a Highland or Speyside uh, share, heavily sherried whiskey um, after um, an Ardbeg, which mm. traditionally once I go down mm. that, that peat path, I don't go back. And Mario brought up, you know, okay, we're going to finish with a sherry. And it really brought out some cool notes. And now I've got to go back and revisit all my, my sherry finished uh, uh, peated whiskey. So Mario, yeah, I mean, it's really fun to play gla uh, glass by glass and you can mix it up and really get some unique, interesting flavors you don't get uh, mm -hmm. otherwise. Mm -hmm. So absolutely agree. And TJ, are you mixing up another cocktail over there? I sure am. And uh, boy, is it topical because I'm working with the tealing, right? The tealing mm. pickle grain. And so this is right in Mario's ballpark because this is finished in uh, ex Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Ooh. Right? And so nice. It's not sherry, Mario, but okay. you know. <laughs> but an awesome Irish whiskey, again, yeah. keeping our international theme. Absolutely. And it's honestly, this is maybe one of the smoothest Irish whiskeys that I've ever had. And you know what I mean? And it's, and it's, it's definitely the aging process where we can see right in here. It's got a, it's got, it's got a nice little brown nuttiness to it. It's not too mm -hmm. dark, not too dark. So it's nothing crazy here. We're not breaking the mold here. Um, but what I decided to do with it is I'm sticking with the tiki theme here. Um, again, I thought it was a, a fun little challenge as the warm weather's happening for me to uh, try the flavors of pineapple with whiskey drinks. And there's actually more synergy there than people might expect. So I, I uh, decided on a whiskey tiki drink that I haven't named yet that actually calls for orange yacht, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which has an almond, a nutty almond flavor that can go really well with the nuttiness and the earthiness and the spiciness of certain whiskeys. Now, I don't have orange yacht, but what I do have is almond milk because my girlfriend is like half vegan. And half so, vegan. so as it turns out, uh, well, she, she, she uh, doesn't All like- All right, we're not going to go to the dairy farm. Listen, I love dairy. Ask it back to the almond milk. Get back blah, to the blah, almond milk. So anyways, or, orange yacht can be substituted out with almond milk and some sugar of some kind. And so that's what I did for this, for this drink in addition to muddling pineapple and lemon in the drink. And so I've, I've got it pretty much mostly prepared uh, besides adding the almond milk. And so wait a minute, what was in there? What, so, so in this shaker is two ounces of the tealing whiskey. There are two pieces of fresh pineapple and one, sl and one uh, slice of le fresh lemon that I muddled into the shaker. And then I also added, because it's my special ingredient for today, the uh, bitters that I can never pronounce <laughs> that are meant for tiki drinks. And so, and so, the, so those bitters, the earthiness of that goes really well with what I've got going on. So I have the bitters, lemon, uh, fresh pineapple, the, uh, the whiskey, and ice. And so then we are ready. Oh, and the almond milk. shaker. We're ready for Mario's favorite part. Now, if TJ goes down from, you know, you know, trying to twist an ankle. Now, I assume, I assume that you guys are making jokes about my incredible form over here, but I'm sorry, yeah. I can only hear shaking in my ear. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. There look it is. That, right? There it is. The, the pro. Hey. So you, you got you got Tom Cruise beat, man. So that's it. That, now Tom's gonna call. But I've Absolutely. actually got about I've got about a foot and a half on Tom Cruise. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So let's see here. Let me find the pirouettes. One of my favorite parts. Yeah, I've heard that about you. Ah. <laughs> so here we go. You should have seen ballet school, Mario. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. His parents wanted a <laughs> refund. I can't even slow dance, man. Ah. You got <laughs> Allison right now turning turning cartwheels, when going no. So far, guys. No. Beautiful. TJ, I love the color of that. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to add a little bit of the bitters on top again as a float. But guys, this doesn't have a garnish whatsoever. It needs a garnish. Hang on, let me make some room. Um, can I have a little bit, please? Yeah. <laughs> I'll mail it to you, Mario. You yeah. Go. Ah. Ah, there we go. I don't think it would be much of a tiki drink if I didn't have a tiki torch. All right. Now, if we hear sirens in the background and we know TJ got carried away. Yeah, my producer slash girlfriend does not condone any of this. But as it turns out, she's out walking a dog. <laughs> nah, she's, she's, uh, she's not here to stop me right now. And there's not a whole lot that she can do. And as it turns out, this, uh, that flammable Harbringer that I was using isn't as flammable as I, as I thought. Now, if I had Bacardi 151, there you go. that yeah. would be perfect. 
And so this little trick isn't going to work on camera here, so we're probably going to have to edit it out. But, this is uh, what happens when you have recordings live. Yeah. Oh, man. It's our first live, live, uh, live uh, blub. But I still like the top, though. That looks it looks, like, it, it looks it, like a it, pineapple. kind of cool, though, right? Well, yeah, it looks like right. a pineapple. It's the one, one it, 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 is, it, is, it is literally the top of a pineapple cut in half. Like, this DJ, is you know what you, know what you need, TJ? You need your collapsible <laughs> straw, and then you can leave the top of the pineapple in there. Ah, you're there absolutely you right, Dave. You're absolutely right. Where's my collapsible straw? Hang on a second. Let me look in the dishwasher. Uh, uh, no, it was a error. joke, and he's actually going <laughs> to There it is, the collapsible straw. That's right. And now, well, save the planet, Dave. I'm not going to use paper straws like a barbarian. Now you can put the top back on there. Because now you can drink it with your straw. Come on, put the, there it is. There it is. the hat back on. Ah, uh, yeah. Done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Now, poke his eye out. It tastes good. Pineapple. It's the 2020 special. So I, uh, so honestly, guys, like I mentioned before, I was I, I was a little bit skeptical when I was try, like trying to work with pineapple and whiskey, uh, but I was really pleasantly surprised, especially with our selection. So thank you again, uh, Mario and Dave. They were the ones who were guiding me through the liquor store. And that which, and now that I know your background, Mario, it's no surprise I ended up with something that was uh, aged in a ex Cabernet barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there you go. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Hey, we're gonna call cheers. that the 2020. Okay. Sorry. We'll call that the 2020. The 2020. I think that works. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we, with that with that pineapple drink, we're gonna go through our final and and our dessert whiskeys. So I'm on number I'm two, Dave. Off, uh, I'm on number two. You're on number two? Yes, sir. You're always late, Mario. Good. I, I, you know, we got to do something about this. So come on. Come on, number two. Okay, my number two, um, going back to the tropics, a distillery that has enough angels share to take care of all of heaven. Ooh. Uh, this is the Kavalon King Car, which is uh, just about their core, most core expression. Um, it's a 46% whiskey. Beautiful color, and um, what I would comment about the King Car, this is a whiskey that you can hand to an experienced whiskey drinker, because there's enough interesting things in here to appreciate, or you could pour this for somebody who you want to expose to whiskey, because it's just gentle enough not to overwhelm any palate that is prone to be drinking whiskey out of a bottle straight. Um, a fruit explosion has great viscosity. The color's beautiful. Mm. And you give a whole class on how to uh, evaluate a whiskey with this. And like I said, it's one of their core ranges. It's uh, a beautiful whiskey. I really enjoy it a lot. So, and and there, yes. there again, um, you know, getting out of that, instead of going down to going to liquor store and buying that same thing that you buy all the time, and this is the whole reason that you go to Whiskey and Barrel Night to, to discover these, these cool whiskeys. It makes all the difference. Go and try different. There's thousands of different whiskeys, thousands of different flavor profiles out there. Get outside the comfort level and, and do different things. And I'm going to go back to, to finish this off. I'm going to go back to an old favorite. I'm just going to rinse this out. Um, so I remember when this whiskey first came out and as i said i've got a god awful sweet tooth but uh so making my way around i've gone from from uh uh south australia to belgium and just taking a short cruise over to france so i'm going to finish with my dessert which is going to be of course bren and uh um i've been a fan since the beginning and Knowing this whiskey actually helped us, again, doing a review on one of our whiskeys on Barrel and Bottle, you get this banana flavor on the finish. Um, just a, a fun, fun, really, really nice, fruity, sweet whiskey. And I always challenge people whenever we do this, I say there's a familiar taste on the finish. And everybody knows it, and nobody can put their finger on it. So when you go through and taste it, think bazooka bubblegum on the finish. So you get a lot of fruit, a lot of banana. This is a seven-year-old 
Uh, single malt whiskey made in France, finished entirely or aged entirely in, in cognac barrels, right? From a, from a boutique cognac uh, uh, distillery and uh, producer. And um, so you get all this fruitiness and everything else. But and, and then once you say that, that, that bubble gum, everyone goes, oh, yeah, yeah, now I can taste it. But nobody can put their finger on it at first. So, so yeah. strange and unusual, Dave, you know? And I've never tasted it anywhere else. And, but anyways, you get your fruit, you get your bubble gum. Um, this is a single malt. Do not underestimate it. A very, very nice, very fun whiskey and definitely my dessert in a bottle. So with that, we're going to run through real quick. Um, Kevin, what do you have for your last and final one? Uh, the last one I have is the... Um... Paul John. I brought Paul John. It was a uh, peated 55.5. Uh, Paul John, the distillery started in 1996. Um, I found it to be pretty uh, tasty as far as a peated whiskey is concerned. And um, I'm going to pour a little bit right now. The uh, big thing is, is uh, of course, uh, Amrit's the older gentleman in the block. They've been around since 1948, as uh, Raj knows. So the uh, Paul John uh, peated 55.5 is a little different than the bold. It's, there, there are different expressions of Paul John. So, and, and, and a neat whiskey, very soft, very subtle. It's not overbearing. I mean, it's something, Amrit is this big, huge, massive beast and a, a huge flavor. And a, a Paul John, I find, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, a little bit lighter, uh, uh, kind of soft as far as the peat? It's got a distinct flavor to it. It's not um, like your uh, Islas. It does have that peat though, like Islas. And of course it does have uh, perhaps a little bit in there. The uh, bottom line with uh, the Paul John peated 55.5 is I get a little bit medicinal in it. Um, and I get some of the uh, yeasty malty signs of uh, the whiskeys that I associate with uh, that region of the world. So bouncing over from, from uh, uh, Paul John to Raj, what are you going to wrap up with today? Uh, we're going to so somewhere totally different. We're going to go to Czechoslovakia, the, the former uh, Czechoslovakia, which is now the Czech Republic. Uh, this is the 30 year old hammerhead. Um, this is a single barrel that I purchased uh, age fully 30 years. Uh, this was made during the communist regime and the communist party said to the distillery, make whiskey. And they said, we don't know how to make whiskey. And they said, no, you will make whiskey. Um, <laughs> what happened is the communism, you know, uh, the wall fell in 1980 and the whiskey was forgotten about. And then when new owners purchased uh, the distillery about eight or 10 years ago, the warehouseman said, we have all this whiskey. And they said, what whiskey? Um, and they, uh, they've released some, I think, uh, maybe a 15-year-old, a 20, 23-year-old, 25-year-old. But when I started talking to them, I said, I don't want a chill filtered. Uh, I want a cast drink, and I want a single barrel. So we did 28 two years ago, and we've got the 30-year-old now. Uh, only 300 bottles. Uh, want, 51.2% want. alcohol. Um, and this, this, so it's Czech barley aged in Czech oak. Uh, Czech yeast. Uh, they even used, they found a little bit of Czech peat. And so there's a little bit of Czech in there. I'm, I'm getting like a lot of vanilla, uh, almost like a malted milk, uh, malted uh, chocolate note on there. But just uh, a really, I mean, talking about dessert whiskey, this is something that you just want to nose for a long time and then really enjoy. Oh, wow. And for, I'm, I'm going to do a, a little pitch here. I had a pleasure of uh, doing a wine trip with Raj uh, down in South Australia. I have, uh, I have a, a, a real respect for Raj's palate. And in, when, when he's sitting here saying this is dessert whiskey and all those flavor notes, I know there's a lot more in there. Um, it, I, I think you just sold five bottles right here. So uh, <laughs> where, where is this? If there's how many of them? How many bottles? 300 bottles. Mostly on the east east coast, there. Yeah, a lot of it has like again, this sort of came late last year, so because of the timing, we haven't really pushed it out yet. But uh, it's starting to make its way to 
uh, East Coast, uh, West uh, California, and Texas. What's the price uh, the point on that? Uh, four seventy five. That's incredible! Wow. For so a very price. Near single cast. Uh, what single cast. Fifty one point two. So, Raj, in your opinion, would you say that this is a pretty good check mate, if you will? Ah, uh, there you go. Ah. Very nice. Oh, that's bad. There we go. Oh, there TJ, go. stick to cocktails. Stick. Do your pirouette thing or something. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not a dad. I'm not a dad, but I've got great dad jokes. I call them uncle jokes. Right. There you so, go. And, and it is a single malt whiskey, so it is like uh, we were saying before, so 100% malted Czech barley. Raj, I really should check that out. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Everyone, everyone's going uh, around yeah. the corner. So. Raj, if you were really fast, and we're going to jump around because everyone's got some really cool stuff. Um, if you were to compare this to a classic scotch that we would know. I don't, I don't, I don't think you can. I mean, I would – Maybe uh, uh, Glenn Farkless, um, you know, that kind of style. I, I think it would be close to that. Um, maybe a, like a, a, you know, a Bunahabin that's been lightly peated because there are a lot of Bunahabins that are lightly peated. Um, so that kind of character, very soft uh, on the palate, but still a lot of rich flavors. It really coats the tongue. It's got great texture and great viscosity. Raj, so, was that 30 years in a virgin cask? A uh, virgin, ch virgin Czech oak cask. Wow. So, and the yeah. European wow. oaks are tend to be uh, a little bit more dense, correct? Right? Correct. So, correct. So you're gonna have a little bit more spice. More spice, more tropical fruit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Coconut, that kind of notes. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, Kevin, uh, you finished up with the peat. Mark, what do you have for dessert? Well, I have a little bit more peat, and that is also from France, from the Brittany area. This is called Cornog, and this is from the Glenarmor Distillery. And uh, this is actually a Sauternes cask maturation, nice. which is nice. I'm a huge fan of a Sauternes uh, finished and also Sauternes matured whiskeys. So I'll just pour that here. So this is another peated gem, and this one is not quite as heavily peated. So it really shows off the, um, uh, those unique wine notes as well. Mm. So uh, a little bit grassy, a little bit sweet, and uh, you get that slight little hint of, of Sauternes, which is uh, uh, made with grapes that had suffered, well suffered, or uh, went through noble rot. So you get something a little bit different. Um, and just delightfully, sweet yet uh, bright brightly peaty if that makes sense you get this really um really light kind of slightly ashy smokiness which is really fantastic so mm. this is also interesting oh wow big, that was big a good call well. mark very interesting whiskey mm. to finish this, with so two whiskeys from france absolute, op, a, absolute opposite ends of the spectrum as i've been drinking for the last hour and um uh I, again, getting out of that regular range, and Mario, you you pulled something out of the cabinet, right? Mario? I uh, I had a goal. My goal was to make you jealous. <laughs> I happen to know that one of Dave's favorite world whiskeys. <laughs> Is red breast. Oh, nice. Yes. And I nice. also happen to know that he doesn't have one. <laughs> yes. So I decided hey, that the mean thing to do today was to finish up with a red breast 21. Oh, nice. Gardner, this is for you. Cheers. Cheers. That, that uh, absolutely insane. I mean, if you want a great drinking, easy going, uh, Full flavored Irish whiskey, the Red Breast 12 is brilliant. Red Breast 21 uh, in its class um, absolutely cleans house with just about any any awards that it, it enters. Um, and it, it's very readily available as well. Yeah. Yeah. At $280, $300 range. Yeah. Yes. And I think you can pick it up most places for about $280. And if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the most awarded expressions of all time. It is. The 25 just came out, and that's going to take tons of awards. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have a kill bag in 18, the matchup with uh, Mario, nice. another great, very attainable whiskey. A uh, different distiller if I can get my makeshift cork off because I broke the regular one. So as I'm doing this, folks, um, get out of your comfort zone. Raj, thank you very much. Mark, we look forward to having you back with us. Thanks a lot. And, this is uh, fun. TJ, very, very cool cocktails, whiskey and barrel night. So it's www whiskey and barrel night. And we will see you at the events when we can do them. New York, we're scheduling for end of August. August 20. August 20. We're going to be there, baby. We'll be there. Very good. We're very positive about that. And everybody, get out of your comfort zone. Always drink your favorites, but try some new ones. Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, cool selections as always. Mario and Raj, we look forward to drinking with you in person again, my friend. And guys, Thanks. remember, drink lots of water. Yes, always Thanks drink. Thanks a lot, Dave. This is a lot of fun. Chat, oh, it was great. Thanks for having us, folks. Be well, guys. Take care.